all right uh, so i have joined as a data scientist uh, quite uh, two years ago and uh, yeah my fascination is in deep learning primarily because of the difference between deep learning and machine learning would anyone uh, care to take a guess on what's the difference between machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence or deep learning so what is the difference people most of the times use these two terms synonymously right machine learning and deep learning or machine learning and artificial intelligence where is the line that demarcates any guess correct true so artificial intelligence is a super set of ml so where does deep learning come correct correct hmm. um you are half correct yeah yes that is an outcome of deep learning definitely the more data ah uh, so that is the architecture itself so i mean yes all of you sort of reminded me of the four blind men and the elephant problem everyone was yeah graphing a different part i'll be talking about another part which none of you have covered which is basically the input aspect the biggest shift in paradigm comes in the inputs so in machine learning most of the algorithms they require structured data most of them <clears throat> whereas in deep learning in neural networks general uh this thing shifts so you can start feeding in raw pixels raw images or raw text or raw audio and the algorithm is capable of handling those things and that is far more valuable than you know any pre processing that we can do if you think about it in i think dr murthy would have covered this previously computer vision was all about finding the right filters finding the right features from an image use those features in machine learning to get the right output whereas in deep learning you directly feed the image and the algorithm is complex enough to handle and get the required output so here i am giving a small matrix i mean this is not exhaustive at all but uh, this gives a fair idea of where deep learning community stands as far as uh, the technology scope so for example image input image output we will be talking about style transfer uh image input to text output this is uh, you know bulk of the research that has been done over the past 4 to 5 years where you feed in an image and you expect some sort of output like uh, whether the image is a cat or a dog uh if it is a cat what kind of cat or if i give an image can i be able to tell what the image is describing for example if i take a snap of this classroom i could either get the head count i could either get a description saying okay there are a bunch of people sitting at desks with their laptops probably in a classroom that's an output where the image stays the same you expect different outputs depending on the problem image to miscellaneous sometimes you want actions to be uh, taken for example we'll be seeing in one of the last slides where people have cracked uh, dota has anyone heard of the game dota right so recently people have come up with uh, open ai specifically they have come up with a bot which can play the game where the number of inputs are so complex so so many and the number of you know interactions are so immense that it's almost mind boggling that they could crack it so yeah that comes into this category where you are feeding an image frame to frame image of the game and the computer is a, is about it's you know it's, it's about to give the outputs as in should i press a ref should i press a right should i attack should i go back all this uh, you know interaction similar with text i feed in raw text i am getting sometimes uh, image text to image synthesis that's a very new uh, very new uh, research area where you feed in a sentence and you get an image out that's kind of crazy uh, text to text you can take a lot of guesses machine translation is one really famous example google translate right so previously it was based on handcrafted uh, features now it's feed in the text it gets you get the output 
yeah so let's dive in if, if there are no uh, doubts in this particular right because miscell miscellaneous again it's just uh, some in this category you are feeding noise and getting an image i'll discuss that anyway and sometimes uh, not all inputs are images or text you have videos you have audio forms so even those can be processed all right so let i'll just dive into the first uh, example so this we have in house which is traffic sign detection yeah right so this particular model been trained on 30000 images of traffic signs and there were around 40 signs. and if i oops by itself i mean this is deep learning 101 as far as i see you feed in an image you build you build a classifier this is a classifier uh yeah so the technology behind this does anyone want to take a guess what is computer vision uh neural network specifically so Sir, right. It is a CNN, which basically does something like this. You feed in an image. Convolution is a digital signal processing term. It is responsible for getting out these kinds of weird features. So basically, you have a very small filter. If the image is say, yeah, 32 by 32. The filter of size 5 by 5. There are very small image sensors, which try to perform a very specific operation and get these kinds of outputs from this image. So each filter gets a different kind of output, and on those filters you again apply filters recursively until you arrive at a point where you think, okay, I have enough interactions from all parts of the images, so I'll just combine them using a neural network and train back, where I feed uh, my outputs in a supervised way. I give the image, I fix my output, and I train the weights. I understand it's more like a something new for you guys but i was trying to demystify as much as i could but yeah this is the dna of a cnn this is how it works and once you kind of wrap your head around it 60% of all the problems are solvable now anything that involves an image you can use a cnn it doesn't matter whether the output is a class whether the output is a text whatever it might be this neural network is in our hands right right so this cn the, the very technology cnn was is kind of old but it was it came into prevalence around uh, 2010 where there was a kaggle competition and uh, be, uh, the winner got the score from i mean the second best and the winner the difference in error was around 20% which was mind boggling people were trying to handcraft features on these images and someone just came and Applied the CNN, it got 20% reduction in error, and the community was crazy, right? So this is where uh, CNNs took over, and this is where people said CNNs are the future. And the second revolution in neural networks is recurrent neural networks, where instead of feeding images, I'll start feeding in uh, what I call text or sequence inputs. So if you see any paragraph, it's a collection of words. correct and rnns are spe specialized for uh, word i mean token input token output so if you see in this example h e l o are my symbols that i'll feed in and each symbol has a specific encoding and this green thing is the neural network which is responsible for storing the information so i feed in h there is some information stored and based on that information it is able to predict the next character could be e 
and that depends on the training that train, uh, training data that i give enough corpus i mean with enough large enough data it should be able to figure out ki you know there are a lot of vowels as compared to consonants so yeah this is a very basic example of a recurrent neural network and uh, this is responsible for any sequence input so what are all the sequences that we know of text videos videos mein what are the sequences you have sequence of frames so i can feed in frame by frame as in or audio i have sequence of wave i can do fourier transform get the information feed it at every frame stuff like that right so the most direct use would be machine translation so i feed in this i am sam maybe i'll also specify a token saying this is english translated to dutch or uh, sorry german and my bad german so it would say ich bin sam right and this so this again was a uh, google crack sort of in 2014 i believe or 16 until which people were doing handcrafted uh, feature generation they would say okay i see a determinal followed by uh, i see a pronoun followed by a determinal followed by a noun so this is the kind of sentence and if this is the kind of sentence i need to get this kind of output for this kind of language so they would write all sorts of rules and just hope that the machine works but with enough data and of course giants like google and facebook have enough data they'll just feed it into a complex enough machine uh, you can just imagine this with a lot of lot many more layers and you get a a complex enough out model that is capable of doing this automatically and the craziest thing is uh, google's uh, machine translation is capable of translating between languages it wasn't even trained on what does that mean so it was trained on english to german and german to uh, spanish but the complexity complexity was such that it could start translating from english to spanish now that is interesting all because of again rnn and one more use would be language modeling itself so in this this is a direct example of language modeling where i am saying i feed in this character what is the probable output i could feed words and once i start doing that with enough training examples the model itself starts talking in that language for example shakespeare i fed in enough shakespeare plays now it starts talking in shakespeare or i feed in latex uh, text it generates latex output although it doesn't make sense that is the uh catch there it need not make sense for example here you see proof omitted why did why this was generated by the machine right the model was complex enough to do this it could generate linux source code even yeah again this makes no sense from a semantic perspective but syntax wise it is more or less correct uh some uh, there was a tweet twitter user who collected all the transcripts of donald trump and he started using an rnn to generate tweets like this and uh, that this, this thing was quite shocking for me I, we all knew ki there was something wrong with that guy but yeah look at this every tweet is sort of trying to be you know racist and this kind of thing right and yeah we also oh, let me just play this so this was generated in house once again uh, where we fed in music in the form of text so midi files are a sequence of notes and a sequence of frequencies how long is how, how long each frequency goes so once i convert the music into text i apply an rnn and feed in a different text input so what happens it starts generating music by itself which is again semantically accurate now i convert it back to notes and this is what you get now don't judge if it is good or bad as far as most of the people i asked uh, they said yeah it's bearable yeah hmm oh uh, we use python we use gpus yes i'm not sure of the hardware ex exactly 
Um, it was a two convolution layer network. It had two convolution layers and two fully followed layers. No, I'm not sure. Oh, and it's in the order of ten thousand. Ah, uh, we are planning to do that. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. Right. As long as it is not original research, or let me put it the other way, unless it is original research, most of the times we don't need to really go into the code. We have the Lego blocks ready. Whether it is a CNN or an RNN, we have the blocks ready with us in the form of TensorFlow. It's a question of putting the blocks together and feeding the right kind of data. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. So it's about uh, reading a lot of papers, keeping up to date with the latest uh, advancements. Most of the time, the papers will also release a GitHub code. Excuse me. Um, Pre-processing. Is one thing, is it? But he not always the case that the first experiment will run well so there is that also this um so there was a library to convert midi to this notation that was all we did that was all This is pseudo music generation. I accept because definitely we are not using waveforms. All right. I, yeah, we'll dive into the next demo. So as you can see, this demo, as it says, it's image captioning, which is image to text. So one, there are multiple layers, like I said. The same image, I could call it a cat. I could do a bit more description. I could go even further. And each has its own name. This might take a few seconds. But does it, can anyone take a guess at what is happening when I feed in an image and getting a text? What do you think is happening? Huh. I'm asking for a broad, broader architecture. Are we using CNN? Are we using RNN? 
we are using both yeah that's the answer so cnn like i said is responsible for feeding the image is taking the image and i'm feeding the cnn output so previously it was a neural network now i'm feeding that to an rnn now that is responsible for generating the sequence itself sequence of words right and is exactly what we have done here so i feed in an image and i get the caption as a person riding a motorcycle on a dirt road this was trained on a million images roughly we'll go there we'll go there we'll go there yes we can a uh, 1 million right image net the string is coming from the rnn let me just go back right so so far i have told ki i'll i'll keep on feeding an input now instead i'll just get rid of this block and i'll just say this input is going to be the output from cnn and the network is responsible for generating word after word after word until it itself generates an end token and when it generates an end token it means okay you stop inference that's what happened right it is a supervised algorithm which means during training i feed the image as well as the expected output so when rnn starts generating gibberish in the beginning the loss is going to be large the mean square error or whatever it is Ah. Right. So this was the training example. The whole thing, the image and the sentence along with it. it's a model the output is the model that includes cnn and rnn
Most of the time, it will be on GitHub. not as easy as an api call So the training time reduces. Exactly. Yes. You, you, you have to. You can do that. Yes. All right. 
on oh, okay uh, yeah one more example of actually one first example of this kind so where we take two images and get a third image now this is not exactly a cnn where because uh, you know the output itself is an image uh, so what happens is you actually feed the same image twice to the same cnn is that correct right? Yeah, this will also work. Which one? This one. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you when you take factorial learning or any other, what is the actual result? Take the result. It's the same. It extracts the integer element to that. So if you see the yeah. So here we. So, picked up momentum, you know, in the past couple of years. Which is these are uh, the 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 whole paradigm of these things is unlike CNN and RNN, where we are using two different neural networks to achieve a single task. So what happens is you are feeding random noise as input for one of the neural network. and expecting it to generate certain output in this case it's a image you feed in noise you deconvolve and get an image now you feed in an, an an image from the training set itself now obviously the training set images look more natural than whatever garbage this is trying to generate in the beginning because the weights are not initialized well and i also use another network which discriminates these two and says which one is real which one is fake it sounds very you know very convoluted that you are doing so much for just a simple task like this what is the reason for this so it turns out that this acts as a regularizer what it what i mean is we are this by itself could have worked but because of the information from this discriminator which says this is more realistic than this that information is being passed to the generator which learns weights more aggressively and what happens is the generator itself starts generating images as close to the training set as possible from noise and that is the kick 
out of nothing i am generating an image you could imagine a random vector of random numbers a vector of fixed size of all random numbers between 0 and 1 Hmm. Correct. That is a seed for the network. That is all it is. Because it needs something as input, right? Could can't be every time it needs to generate a new image, which means every time I need to feed in a new something. And that might as well be a noise. It turns out, yeah, like I said, the generator learns weight so aggressively that it starts generating images so in tune with the training set, it's hard to distinguish between what is real and what is fake at the end of it. So the yeah, the revolution is called a generative adversarial network. And these are some examples of GANs where you feed in. So like I said, instead of, uh, like I said, this is noise, but it could be anything that we want. Might as well be another image, right? And what, see, you can just focus on this particular input. Where I'm feeding in this image as input here, and this particular image, which is uh, as an output here, right? With enough training examples, I can now convert, you know, satellite images to proper maps with road layouts. And these two are quite generic, the input output. I can change them to whatever I want. And this is even more striking that I feed in a wireframe and I get a actual colored bag with the texture and everything proper. That is because my training examples had enough leather bags that it starts understanding what is the expected output. So one of the uh, question was, can we get text to image? That's exactly what this paper is doing, where it feeds a se sequence of tokens which might as well be different from noise. As long as it is something, it is fine. So I'm feeding a set of tokens and I'm getting an image out. It's creating these images. No, it is creating from scratch. Yeah. So the input is reversed.
based on the volume of the training is look at the man in the best you are trying to the downside is uh, the images are very tiny yeah okay so one thing that we have one is the one that is oh yeah that too so one Hmm. So it is unable to understand the anatomy of an animal. It can recognize the texture, it can recognize the colors and all, but sometimes it just crazy with the output. that's a problem with the discriminatory yeah. so there is such yeah these are extremely cherry picked this the uh how do i put it could just search for text image i think we'll get it text image uh, gan oh yeah yeah they are much complex than this <sighs> i think we are uh, running out of time We are. So, final loss is applied over there so that is the technical part of it how you do that mm -hmm. yeah um so skip slide i mean this was sort of a uh, a primer for you guys to see if you were on board with me or not yeah i just wanted to take it these are already there in our phones so nlp stuff like audio speech audio to text these are already there in our phones there was also a nice product from microsoft which uh, is assistive glasses but uh, so what happens there is uh, you have a sensor on the uh, spectacles and that is able to take images and able to figure out what object it is seeing so this is going to be really helpful for uh, visually challenged people it does object detection it does image captioning uh, face detection and mood detection so that was a, this was the youtube video i mean you can just google search and find it but i'll just skip this and go till to the last slide which is reinforcement learning this is again unlike whatever we have learned so far we have understood so far where the difference is the environment itself is extremely complex the rules underlying the environment are very hard to pin down so for example when i when i'm talking about this uh, body for breakout game i can't really explain how to uh, feed in the rules apart from the fact that i need to get a high score so oh yeah i'll just describe and play the video 
so what happens is i'll feed this particular image as an input to the convolution network and the network is responsible for learning the weights in time anyway the, so in the in beginning this is going to be playing like any child it, it's really bad at it but over time what happens the weights are adjusted so well that it understands the right output at the right point of time and with enough training exam so here the uh, kick is that it needs to maximize this particular score the 000 has to be as high as possible and that is being fed as the loss to the convolution network in time So that's that. The machine itself has only two controls, left and right. So this particular CNN, whatever it is, it is taking this as the input, and the frame is going to be a left or a right. So with enough training, what happens? And anyway, this was a very simple example. There are only three controls. So the nice thing is, it figured out that digging a tunnel is the best way to get the score, so that it doesn't need to work. Yeah. That is a strange uh, inference, actually. Even I didn't understand why it did dig a tunnel. Why did it, did it want to be lazy? Is something? Yeah. Yes. Irrespective of moving left or right, I think that's a. Ah. Huh. Irrespective of moving left or right, exactly. 